So to pivot a little, we'd like to share how Finnish.io is being used in the um, continuously innovative motorsport sector. Uh, so uh, the Software AG ERA Championship is the world's first all-electric junior formula racing series, showcasing high-performance electric motorsport in a competitive environment that guarantees close racing. The vehicles are high-spec automotive uh, IoT assets, sending real-time data, uh, video, and are built to the latest motor, motor, um, uh, motor and battery technology available on the market. So with this, I would like to introduce Lars from Software AG, who will demonstrate how the combination of Thin Edge IO, Bellina OS, and Software AG's Cumulosity IoT deliver the high performance motorsport telemetry needed by the engineers, drivers, and fans. So, Lars, uh, over to you. All right, thank you very much, Philip. Let me share my screen. So, hi, everyone. I'm Lars Peters. I'm a solution architect at, uh, at Software AG. I've been working together with the people of uh, ERA, the Electric Racing Academy, for uh, a small year now. And uh, I wanted to share with you what uh, ERA is ex exactly doing and uh, how we're using Tinech for that. So kicking things off, um, what is the Software AG ERA Championship? Well, the Software AG ERA Championship is the first fully electric entry-level racing championship. So think a little bit of F4 for electric racing. It's a feeder series uh, for the more uh, senior um, racing cate categories, um, but fully electric. The idea is to give young drivers a chance to hone their skills and become the number one electric driver. I think isn't karting good enough for young drivers aspiring to be uh, the fastest electric driver? Uh, well, electric racing is a completely a different beast. Uh, with 100% torque you get from zero kilometers an hour, um, changes your driving style drastically, as well as the battery management, uh, which can win or lose you the race, um, especially if you are thinking about uh, recharging your battery while you're braking and how you use that recharge energy and when you use that recharge energy. So that's what ERA is doing. Uh, besides the goal of make electric cars go fast, um, the people at ERA uh, added some, some core values to, to the racing and what they want to build, what they want to bring to a, a feeder series. Um, those uh, those uh, values that they want to bring are starting off with sustainability, equality, and accessibility, besides, of course, making electric cars go fast. So sustainability in that um, ERA is trying to bring innovative technology to be researched and development, uh, developed in a highly competitive and cost-effective platform. Um, so they not only want to uh, bring sustainable cars, they want to bring a sustainable model for delivering these races and bringing chances to uh, these young drivers besides the fact that the race cars are completely electric. Um, so that makes uh, the sustainability effect also uh, pretty clear. Then equality, um, ensuring that everyone has an equal opportunity to participate in uh, motorsports is something that motorsports in itself has a long way to go. Uh, I don't think we've seen a woman in recent years in uh, Formula One, for, uh, for instance, um, there have been two already subscribed in ERA in the first series. Uh, with another uh, female driver uh, participating next year, of course. Um, and accessibility as well. I've been told by uh, by Dieter from, from IRA that apparently the cost of entering or growing into a Formula One, Formula One driver requires the driver and its team itself to already uh, put $4 million on the table. And that's before even starting uh, as a Formula, Formula One driver. With ERA, we're trying to make sure that this cost is uh, drastically reduced for the drivers by creating a series that is mostly um, sponsored and brought by cooperating uh, partnerships together with, uh, with ERA. Besides that, ERA also offers um, the, the small card you see on, on the right side, the, uh, that's a, a build-it-yourself kit for um, students who want to participate in STEM directions, uh, STEM courses in school for them to build something themselves and you can uh, you can get that from ERA as well. So that's a little bit of the why ERA is doing what they're doing. Maybe it's interesting right now to take a look under the hood 
uh, and take a look at, at the car itself. So the Mitsubishi F110E, E for electric, boosts a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, for your information, that's about half of a Nissan Leaf car and about 12 loads of laundry. If you're um, considering which one would be most fun, I would say the ERA car is, is most fun there. That 24 kilowatt hour battery pack um, is in a car that is significantly less weighty than, than the Nissan the Nissan Leaf that I talked about earlier. It weighs about 690 kilograms, including the driver. Combining those two and together with a 130 kilowatts or 175 horsepower motor makes, uh, makes it so that our young drivers can go top speeds of up to 210 kilometers an hour in a fully electric car. Let me tell you, it looks exhilarating. Uh, supported by 13-inch Goodyear tires on a Dome F110 chassis, um, which racing fans might recognize from previous years in uh, Formula 4. Now, that's a little bit under the hood of the car. Talking about what we're doing with Thin Edge and uh, Software AG is uh, the data. The data changes everything. In every one of the lower levels of racing, there is no live data stream available. Uh, all data is captured and, and inspected later on if there is any data available. That's a big if already. What we try to do is stream that data live so that um, both the race engineers, the public, and then the drivers themselves can benefit from that data. Um, a few examples of why this is useful um, in June, I had the chance to participate or partake in the um, ERA event in, in Jarama. Um, it was then uh, 40 plus degrees Celsius in uh, Madrid, Spain. And for electric cars, fully um, powered by batteries, that was quite a challenge. So the fact that we had live feed of data uh, coming from the battery packs meant that we could keep an eye, a continuous eye on uh, the safety of the battery packs and the safety of the drivers, of course. But not only that, and it's not only safety related, but if you're teaching young drivers, um, the most um, information you get uh, is immediate feedback. So uh, the race driver can communicate with the driver immediately on how are you handling your battery, battery when are you recharging, what lines are you driving, um, how is your, um, your brake points uh, compared to other drivers, when can you push and when you should probably uh, fall back a little bit to conserve uh, battery power. I made a small video of that of uh, one of the views um, a few days ago that we had during one of the tests. Uh, it's a short clip um, of one of the views of data coming in. So um, if I play the video, we see that the ERA car is approaching a uh, corner. So the accelerator pedal was at zero. And right now he's speeding up again with the torque requested uh, rising and rising and rising until the driver here reaches 116 kilometer, kilometers an hour. So that's one of the possible views with inverted information and then some general information together with a map. Next to that, uh, items we're measuring are uh, speed and acceleration. We're measuring the torque um, that the motor is request requesting. Temperature of the battery pack already talked about, that's very important. And then um, important as well is regenerated power. Regenerated power we calculate from combining the current voltages and then the currents. How does thin edge come into this? Um, in the car itself, we have a, a Raspberry Pi um, that does the calculation and reads out the canvas on the device, on the car. And then um, this uh, Raspberry Pi boosts a, a thin edge that we mainly use for data mapping and sending the data towards uh, Cumulosity IoT where we can then use it for the engineering dashboards that I've shown, some audio engagement views, and then research and development, and very importantly, um, information, teaching information for the driver. Um, the moment we started talking with uh, ERA on, on using Thinage, um, the, a large part of the development had already been done in, um, in, you, by using a technology called Bellina, Bellina is a, a series of tools or offers a series of tools that you can use for um, managing Linux devices as 
um, um, remotely as Docker containers. Um, so ERA was using Balina um, to remotely uh, update the software while, while they were developing it. What we noticed was um, while we were reading the data, we had to do a whole lot of changes in uh, software um, just to change the data that we're reading out from um, the telematics and sending it to our cloud platform. So um, with the requirement, the hard requirement of using uh, Belina itself, we couldn't just post, just put Tinage next to our ERA telematics. Um, we wanted to use Belina as well. And that overview high level architecture looks a little bit like that. So on our Raspberry Pi, uh, firstly, we run the Belina OS. And then in two separate containers, we run once the ERA telematics software that was already being used. And then next to that, we use Tinage for mapping uh, the devices and all the data coming from the ERA telematics and sending that to uh, Cumulosity. Um, the change of using Tinage made sure that we can um, more rapidly um, change what data exactly we wanted to take a look at. And uh, in coordination with the data engineers that joined for uh, this season, it's going to enable us to make uh, a lot of uh, changes towards the, the visuals a lot faster. So pretty excited for that. Um, how we came to this, this ERA telematics container next to the trash container. And maybe important to note as well, uh, the communication happens, of course, via the MQTT broker by the Tinage. We expose the MQTT broker on the container uh, and then from there use Tinage data mapper to send the data towards Cumulosity. So for that, uh, I had the wonderful help of Christoph Stoitner and Hans Boef of the community, which uh, were a great help in making, making sure that the, um, the two containers ran nicely next to each other. So here is an example of a Docker Compose file, file that's used by the Bellina to uh, define which services are being used. So here are two services, one the ERA telematics and the one the uh, the edge. Um, in Bellina, it looks a little bit like this, where we have uh, at the bottom of the screen, then you see two services running, one ERA telematics and one thin edge then. Um, and we can use the terminal still to log in to um, our Bellina OS and have a look at uh, what is coming in. Now at the top of your screen, uh, you see a, a small warning message, which was recently brought to the attention of ERA. Um, so the, the past invoices, of course, Bellina as well comes with a cost. Um, so for the next season, we will try to make sure uh, to remove the uh, dependency on Bellina. A lot of the software development has been done of reading out account data, uh, and it might make sense right now to shift a large part of that uh, towards the device management uh, that, um, that was talked about earlier. So let me move to that one. So we'll try to make sure that we can manage reading, manage the, the part that's the thin edge service and that reads all the data from the canvas, um, that we can manage that next to uh, the thin edge then. Um, as well as uh, we right now are sending a huge amount of data via the, the 4G modem, which is great for data gathering, but is not uh, optimal for bandwidth. So it might make sense in the coming year to uh, have a deeper look at prioritization. And um, a large help there will be some analytics to be performed on the device itself. So we'll take a look at if we can use the streaming analytics, uh, maybe by the, the APAMA team to, uh, to do some analytics already. A good example there would be um, right now we're sending current and voltages live, but actually we only really care about the uh, power used, uh, power used and power regenerated. So if you multiply your current and your voltage, we'll get the power and then it would be interesting if we can start integrating that power usage over different sectors of, or over different labs. So take a look at are we generating uh, power, how much power are we generating and when can we use it? A big challenge that we still have, and this is my reach out to the community, a big challenge that we still have is a lack of a, an embedded engineer. So someone that likes to get his hands dirty with uh, thin edge and uh, small resource constrained devices. Uh, so if anyone in the community is interested, feel free to reach out and we'd be more than happy to have a chat with you. That's it for my presentation. Uh, once again, I would like to thank Christoph Stoitner and Hans Boe for helping technically, and Philip Hooker for facilitating usage of Tinage by ERA and being the driving force, pun intended, of our cooperation.
Thank you very much, everyone.